Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we are playing EVE against Kindred. I'm testing out First Strike yet again. I've been enjoying it a lot. I think it's quite good actually. So maybe try it in your own games. Um, and let me know how it goes in the comment down below. And if you think Electric Grid's better, tell me. You can maybe Flame Us Electric Grid users, Flame Us First Strike users. Let's have some... Uh, arguments in the comments and we can maybe come to a conclusion or something in the comments where we just go whatever we feel like or something but anyway i'm going to explain my thought process in this game rune doesn't matter that much i wouldn't overthink it rune and build it's whatever just go whatever looks cool at the end of the day and then just focus on your decision making and then that'll result you in a lot more lp than just thinking like oh build that's all i care about it's not just about build it's a lot of more more than that so we're playing against kindred matchup we need to pot top this game why because draven against smolder is a very bad matchup so draven's going to be a lot stronger early so they're going to be able to invade our bot side if i part top i mean part bot so i need to part top because trundle's very strong level one to three early game and i don't want to get invaded by the kindred so it's going to be the best option to not get invaded um so that's why I start blue this game, parting top. Um, I just want to get my full clear off against Kindred. I'm not too worried about anything else. We're just farming, chilling, and making sure we don't die to Kindred's invade, which she probably wants to do. And I don't have flash either, I lost a level 1 to Nordhog. Which is a bit silly level one by me so here when you're scared of them level three invading you on red red you just ward the red there and then you do krugs and this will save you a hundred thousand times when you're scared of level three invades because then they'll show on that ward you'll be doing krugs you'll finish krugs and then they'll be halfway through red or something and then you just go and smite it or something or just maybe you can't go for the red and just base go both side or whatever, or base go top, like, you have so many options, but instead of just dying, the game's a lot more playable that way, but Kindred doesn't come for the invade, so I'm pretty happy for that. Kindred shows the bot side, for that smolder kill, um, very shortly. So, I see that, and I'm like, alright, she's level 3, so I can quickly one-shot crab before she gets there and deny her both scuttles. Which I'm pretty happy about. She does get a kill on Smolder, which kind of sucks, but whatever. We get the crabs. So, uh, yeah. This is pretty good for our 1v1, besides hurting a kill. But we do get double crabs. We do get some vision here, I believe. And then we look on the karma here. We get a flash out, so we're going to be able to punish that as soon as we're level 6. She can't flash away from the Sandra ult or my charm, so... We're just going to use that to our advantage later on. Whenever you get a flash from a laner or a jungler, you want to think, oh, how can I punish that now? Like, think of what options you're going to have. So we just base. Got to get to our camps now, got to full clear again, got to get at level 6 as fast as possible. Not over complicating the game, just keeping it chilled out and relaxed. We see Kindred on the Raptors there, and that's pretty good for us because that means Grubs might be an option for us if she doesn't go up towards her top side. And it looks like she branches down to look for some dragon or bot place. So I'm like, alright, sweet, I can get Grubs and then I can do my Krugs and they'll give me level 6. I'm just planning out my path to level 6. Very important to do when you play Eve. You want to make a game plan. Oh, how can I get level 6 as fast as possible? 
do X, do this, do that. Like, just make it plan every time. You want to make sure you do that. So that way, at least when you're wrong with your plan, you're going to improve and be like, oh, why did my plan work? And then you'll, like, adapt each time and improve instead of just being like, oh, I'm just going to do this and I'm going to do that. You want to make plans every time. That's how you get better and better and improve. So now we got six, and the Karma's got no flash, but Lissandra's basing, low health, low mana, no TP. Uh, we're level five to level six in the jungle matchup, so we're a lot stronger than her in the 1v1, so we can definitely go for this crab and deny her the mark. Even if she kills us, small Draven's at one HP, so it's like both ADCs are basically dead in this situation, so if we can kill this Kindred here, or going for this crab, we're going to be in a very, very good spot. CC chain her, very nice, Alistair takes the kill like a weirdo, I get a bit mad, like he didn't have to do that, um, and took the shutdown, which is like especially bad, but whatever, we're level 6 now, we do the crab real quick, and then we can look mid for a free kill, because she has no flash, we have Lissandra W, Lissandra, oh, and my W, so, so much CC and a lot of damage. Easy kill there. Get some first strike, get some treasure hunter, setting ourselves up. Alright, our ult's down. What's the time to do? Full clear. I'd love to full clear when my ult's down. You don't want to do anything else but that. Like, um, I'm like starting a song out of it. Like, when your ult's down, it's time to full clear. When your ult's up, you look for plays. Like, it's very simple. Very simple. Like, don't get it twisted. Like, if your ult's up, you probably should be doing something besides clearing. And it goes the same way. If your ult's down, you probably should be farming. Like, I do this exact same thing in Challenger. Like, it doesn't matter what elo you're in. It's the same fundamental that you follow every game. And this is how you become consistent. You do the same thing that actually works as much as possible. You don't do the same thing over and over if it doesn't keep working. I mean, something's fundamentally wrong about it. But in this, it's been tested and tried 50,000 times, so definitely gonna work in your elo, even if it works in my elo, works in Challenger, works in every elo. I've tried everywhere. You know, like change it up. Oh, I'm in low elo, so I shouldn't farm. I should just perm the gank because I'm invisible. Like, you don't want to change it up. Anyway, that's that rant done. Um, we have our ult up in 30 seconds, but we also have a lot of money, but Rumble is very low and so is Trundle, so it's a very volatile lane state, so the first jungler there is probably going to have the most impact in the lane. So me just knowing I can go invisible without him knowing I'm here, he's going to be playing up in Trundle's face. Very easy kill. Start with the E there, so we can't flash our Q. Nice, nice, nice stuff. You don't want to start with Q there in case he has flash. Because if he has flash and he dodges your first Q, you don't have much damage if you flash after him because you lost your Q um, damage. The first Q gives three little orbs that all proc for bonus damage, so you don't want to miss that one. Here, my first strike, I mean, my futures market's bringing in free boots and at 9.45, so we'll pick up those Sork shoes as soon as we get them boots in our inventory with futures market and... We got a really nice base off, but we don't have Dark Seal yet, so it's a bit sad, but I don't want to put the Dark Seal on my inventory just to delay um, this two powerful item spikes that I want ASAP. for the nice kill there on the Nautilus and then here you're gonna see something very very spicy 
So, where's Draven? He's alone. He has no support with him. He's walking to lane. This is called the fly trap, I like to call it. You run between the turret, and they're always going to sit in this bush if they're not walking to lane. So, as soon as he E's you, you can E. But if Draven doesn't E you, you have to know he can cancel your E. So, Draven's very, very easy to beat as Eve, as long as you wait for him to E before you E. And then Draven pretty much is like the most useless champ in the world against you, as long as you know that. Now, we have Smolder, and Lissandra is protecting my Raptors, which isn't ideal. And we did see Nautilus there, which I didn't see in-game, which was a bit of a mistake. Yeah, but like they're going for some crazy invade, or not even invade, like dragon contest. 2v4, they do not care. Yeah, we get double kill them. Unfortunately, Alistar goes down, but it's for the greater cause, right? Oh, we killed Draven instead of Karma, but what's whatever. Get the first strike, we're getting rich. And then Smolder just wants to come around here. I don't know what he's doing. He should just push the wave and then we die. But now Nautilus has been alive for too long. So we just have to run now. We've been making this play for way too long. It's way too risky now. Good start here. Yeah, so we're just um, farming our camps while we wait for an opportunity. So, as soon as I take my blue, I realize Karma's alone in the bot lane and she can't be there because I can just dive her very easily. So, that's why I look to go for the Karma here. Yeah, I mean, not yet, but we just wait for the next wave. That wave that just crashed then, I want to deny her. So that's why I go for the invade now. Or not the invade, the dive, what am I saying? Go smite there. Another thing you have to understand with first strike, to guarantee you proc it, you need to smite straight away. That's uh, how you use the rune. Because otherwise, if you don't smite, you could auto me maybe, and then I lose 10% bonus damage, or whatever it is. And I don't get extra money. We want money, so we have to smite for the money. Yeah, I didn't eat the Nautilus for whatever reason, but uh, we do pick up the killer Nautilus. And then we see this random TP coming in. So I'm like, alright, let's flank this guy and kill him. Yeah, I mean, he TPs and he gets nothing out of it. Good catch by us to see uh, um, the TP. Um, we can't really protect the Raptors here. We don't have ult, so unfortunately, Kendra does get a mark there. Now we're just clearing our camps, our ult's not up, but um, we have no camps up on this side of the map, and we just finished top side, so we can look for a kill on this rumble. We're so strong, like, we don't really need our ult anymore. We ping our Alistar back, because we don't want him to show on the ward just yet. Nice kill there. Karma accused me, and I'm like, oh, that's annoying. I'm going to kill you for that. Karma flashes out, though. 
here I'm just waiting for my ult. Um, this is just game sense. I know Kindred could possibly be in the area, so if I do show on the Nautilus there, they could maybe turn on me and kill me before my ult comes up. So that's just me being 100% um, safe and not burning my ult. I mean, playing without my ult, just in case Kindred's there. I don't want to give them any chances to come back into the game. Here we got Alistar flashing over the wall like a ch like an absolute chad, and we pick up the karma kill there. Now Kindred is bot side, so I take out camps, and we do have a lot of money here. But I do see the rumble showing here, and I do have so much damage, so we're able to kick pick up the kill on that guy. Very nice. We got Death Cap. We're just basing our ults down. Grab the Magi's. Very yummy stuff. Now let's sort of wait for our ult if possible. Um, how can we wait for our ult? We can sort of look for Dragon. Um, we do it quite fast and there's a very low chance they'll contest when we're this far ahead. So we're just closing out the game by getting the objectives. And we don't want to trade to the Rift Herald. We want to give them that. So let's just try to get both objectives here. And then look to play for turrets and picks. You can look for the picks first if you're behind or like even so like they might try contest so you get the objective i mean the picks before the objective so they can't look for um a contest but in this case they're not gonna <laughs> contest so that's why you just may as well do it really fast Don't have our ult just yet though. But as soon as that ult comes up, we look for the kill, but um, well he does hard overextend. There was a bit of a mechanical misplay which didn't end up mattering, but I should wait for my E to, um, uh, my Lich Bane to come back up before I E him there straight away. little detail there is I got one little Q off before um, I ulted, so it bounced off of Kindred into the Karma, which put her into ult execute range. But uh, it's not that important to look at. But yeah, we're just getting Rift here. We use that to break open the game. I hope you guys are learning stuff. Um, feel free to ask any questions in the comment. I'll try answer. And like the video and subscribe, please. It helps me out a lot. And join the Discord for coaching. But uh, let's see how we close out the game with this Rift Herald. Getting all the money spent while our team is also basing. We're syncing up our bases so we're all on the map at the same time. Alistar just pumps this guy out of the Kindred ult and we pick up the kill on that guy. Now let's just do Baron. We just kill the enemy jungler. I've got so much AP, I do a lot of damage to it. Oh, also, I was asked in the comments on my previous video, why Sudden Impact over Eyeball Collection? Sudden Impact on Eva is very, very strong. Because you do so much damage with it. You do like 3k damage a game with it. Which is insane. It's almost as much as First Strike does, damage-wise. So, why is, it, why is it better than Eyeball? So eyeball takes a very long time to stack up, and uh, every time you get a kill, you get AP. Cool, but it gives you like 30 AP. That's like an amp tome. But the difference is, sudden impact gives you like what a Dirk, 
but like an AP version of Dirk. So when the enemies are squishy, you're going to get so much damage, it's insane, like out of it. So every time you f come out of invis, you get the sudden impact. Every time you E people, you get invis. So every single time you fight, you have the sudden impact activated. So that's why you go sudden impact instead of eyeball. Sudden Impact's better on champions that can proc it every time they fight, and Eve can proc it every time. Say you're playing a champ that can't proc it every time, maybe Eyeball's better than. Here we're just sieging, letting Trundle push in the bot lane. And then we're going to pop down the Rift Herald here. And then go play with the Trundle. And then we just end the game like this. And that pretty much just wraps up the game. And we end here with the Rift Herald push and the Trundle. And that wraps it up, guys. Yep, as again, join the Discord for coaching. Hope you guys learned something. Peace, peace, peace. Good luck in your games, guys.